Does that mean the ING we see today may not be the ING of tomorrow? I can guarantee you that is the case. Hi, I'm René Carriel, and I'm very privileged to be joined today by the new Chief Executive Officer of ING, Ralph Hammers. Ralph, very few of us in our careers get the opportunity to be Chief Executive of a business unit, let alone a large financial services organisation like ING. How does it feel? It's, it's a real challenge to take on, not only given the challenges that you know, the institution itself faces in the market developments and regulatory developments, but it's also a real challenge to take on given the public opinion on the financial institutions and, and the financial industry in, in general. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm looking forward to do it and um, I'm actually also a little bit proud to take this forward. What can your mixed number of stakeholders expect from a future with you as Chief Executive? I think the cornerstone of, of, of everything we're going to do will be building trust and showing care. Trust for our clients, trust for our employees going in the right direction, trust for our shareholders to getting returns going forward. But it's also because of that element that it will not change overnight. Because it will have to be built up gradually. It will be built up by being more open, being more transparent, being more vulnerable at certain moments as a leader as well. Standing for some of the decisions you take, uh, explaining, connect with the people, connect with your stakeholders in a direct way rather than through all the communication means we can kind of develop these days. But that's really the starting point of everything. And I think if you're really, if you're really successful in listening to all those stakeholders and getting out the right mix to build the trust, that is the foundation for any prosperity for ING in the future. Ralph, customers. You've said frequently that customers are at the heart of everything you do. Customers have become more discerning. They've become more challenging. They have very different views. They're prepared to leave. They're prepared to change. They're prepared to multi-bank. They're prepared to have a number of different insurers. How will you deal with that challenge? Customers' needs are changing very rapidly and their behavior, as you have indicated, is changing very rapidly because of the trust factor sometimes, because of the service factor sometimes, but also just because of technology and the way that brings change to how they can get access to information. It's, it's these trends that make us having to change how we deal with customers as well. And honestly, this works out differently per segment and per product, basically. Clearly, for the consumers, the consumers uh, segment of the customers, trust is the starting point, whether you're an insurance company or a bank. And that trust factor is something you build over time on one side, but on the other side you build it by showing modesty, by being there when they need you, being reachable through different means, and by giving them the right information, by being transparent. That's the cornerstone uh, for that segment. You have to make the products easier and the services easier. And you have to deal with their changing behavior of having access to much more information and wanting to do things themselves much more than in the past. And this is this strange thing that, are, that is happening on one side. Customers in the consumer segment want some kind of a guidance and assurance that they are doing the right thing. But on the other side, they want to really decide themselves and do it themselves. And this is where you have to adapt your model. So we've got consumers. How about the rest of your customers? And so basically, if you look at the different segments that we deal with, so we, we, we deal with both on bank and insurance with consumers on one side, and we go all the other way, SMEs, mid corpus as we call them, corpus and financial institutions as well. Is it possible to have that range within one organization? 
from the very small to the huge conglomerate? Yeah, um, if you want to be a sustainable financial institution going forward, you need both. Of course, you need both lacks to stand up. Generally, it's the consumers that bring the money to the bank in an economy. And it's uh, often the corporates that need it, either through an investment as a shareholder on the insurance side or as a lender in the role of the bank and the banking side. So you have to deal with all these segments in order to have a balanced model going forward. Uh, and I'm a firm believer from that perspective in the universal banking model. If I said innovation, which ING has had a strong reputation for in the past, what does innovation mean to you going forward? One of the, the real changes happening in the world with a huge effect on the banking industry and the financial industry at large, so also in the insurance industry, is the, the technology side of it. And beyond the technology side, the intelligence side of it. Uh, and what I mean here is that data and data analytics has become and will become more important for us to understand the needs of our clients and service them much better at the right moments. And one of the things there is that, you know, given the fact that we, through digital information, we know who our clients are, what they are like, what their financial state is, but also how they behave. And it's the latter part, that is the additional part that we should use, is that we can help them much better. And if you continuously help them, and sometimes that's in a product offer, which they will disregard, which is okay. But at least they show that, that it is really trying to help them, then they will also trust you more. And, and, and from there on, you build the relationship further. So innovation is a key aspect here. And it's not only innovation in terms of the technology and, 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 and taking the technology and apply it in the way we work. It's also the culture around it in order to do it successfully. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a believer in disrupting yourself before somebody else does it. I will not shy away from a bit of cannibalization if I feel it will make us grow. Grow in terms of growing pains, grow in, in, in terms of doing things faster, but also grow in terms of you know, more clients and, 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 and better service. Is there anything else you can do? Yeah, I, I think as any company uh, active in a economy and in a society, your role is beyond the factual role of the service that you provide, which for us would be, you know, getting money through savings or through insurance policies and investing it on the other side or, or lending it on the other side. That transformation function that the financial industry has is, is, is basically the core business. Okay, but we have to do more than that. We should realize that we owe to the society in which we work, not only because our people live in that society, but we as an institution are important in that society that we play a bigger role than uh, just the transformation role. And I think that the combination of further focus on the client as a starting point of everything you do with ensuring that you take your role in society seriously, that that combination will help us to turn around some of the emotion as well. How confident are you that you will deliver that? I'm a believer that short-term financial results will also be good if you don't necessarily per se focus on the short term. That's a very yeah. confident point of view. If we get it right with our clients, if we get it right vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the society, if we get it right vis-a-vis -vis my people, uh, then you know that sustainable balance will provide good results also for the, for the shareholders. 
And clearly, you know, there will always be decisions that we take in order to improve financial results that may not be interpreted positively for one of the other uh, stakeholders, but it will also be the other way around. And it's, it's a normal way of, uh, of working. And I think you can, you can balance. How confident are you that you're the analysts, the, your shareholders, your investors, will understand this balancing act? Well, I think that uh, it's the same investors and analysts that have been hurt, given negative returns on their shares or not receiving any dividends for a while in their investments in the financial industry. And that was because some of it was not sustainable. So <laughs> I think it's not only the financial industry itself that has learned a lesson. I think also some of the investors probably uh, have learned a lesson because they're not happy with the returns the financial industry has uh, generated over the last uh, couple of years either. How will you deal with such a competitive marketplace? Yeah, the marketplace is competitive. Um, at the same time, you need to have guts. You need to have courage to change. And I think ING has shown the courage in the past to really go into markets and reshape the industry, reshape the models. What gives you that courage? I believe that if any institution in the world can pull this one off, if any team in the world can pull it off, if any group of, of employees can pull it off, it is us. We've shown it in the past in various ways, and I'm confident we can show it in the future. But it will not come without changes. Changes in the way we organize ourselves, changes in the culture, changes in the sort of people that we need for this, the different skills. But if any company, if any bank, if any financial institution, if any insurance company can pull it off, it's us. Does that mean the ING we see today may not be the ING of tomorrow? I can guarantee you that is the case. Things are f moving so fast. And the, the, the beauty is that, you know, ING has been able to do this in the past, taking a completely different perspective of how you, we want to service our clients. And it's really that aspect of our culture that will bring the next phase of innovation, that will also deliver the next model and therefore the next phase of success for ING. So the ING, or five years from now, will be completely different in terms of how we interact with clients, how we service them, how we follow them, how we care for them, will be different from the way we do it, completely different. Ralph, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much.